25 Ridiculous Ways to Use Banners in Minecraft Banners sometimes get overlooked by the Minecraft community. Sure, you might get one from a pillager every now and then, but how often do you use these? So, to fix that, let's see some of the wackiest ways to use banners in your Minecraft world. And hey, the YouTube security guard bets that you can't subscribe to the channel before this minecart reaches the top. So, to prove them wrong, ride to that red sub button down below. It's free, and it helps out a ton. Number 1. Sometimes, you've gotta make part of your base off limits. Which makes sense, if you build something as dangerous as a wither mob switch, all it takes is one fool getting a bit too close and the whole operation goes sideways. So to keep them and your world safe, why not put up a couple of these banner warning signs like such? Because it's always better to prevent an accident than clean up after one. Number two, between glass panes, tinted glass, and 16 dyes to choose from, windows have plenty of variety. But while those blocks are great, they don't exactly have a small footprint. So if you're looking to make a detailed window without all the space that it takes up, why not just bust out some blue banners like such? Add white lines for shading and a frame of choice, and the result will be something pretty special. Number three, Steve's technology isn't exactly high tech. So if you're tired of the dark ages and wanna bring your realm into the information age, why not try this? By throwing a gradient banner like this on a shield, you can get a pretty convincing cell phone when it's placed in an item frame. And while I doubt that T-Mobile has coverage on your server, this might be a nifty detail to add to your next desk. Number four, Minecraft is full of necessary evils, but the most common case might just be the F3 debug menu. Sure, it's helpful, but all those numbers and values are a pain to look at after a while. So to spare yourself the trouble of finding diamond level yet again, why don't you just throw up some of these numbers on banners and make a visual indicator instead? That way, next time you enter the quarry, you can stop where you need to without ever entering into the screen. Number five, unlike many other games, Minecraft doesn't overload you with loading screens, but the ones that it does have are somewhat basic. So if you're fed up of waiting on this screen, then I guess you could always wait on this screen instead. Using the banner's sway animation, it's possible to make a fully functioning loading screen within your world. And weirder yet is that even if you reload the chunks or restart start the save, they still flow the same way. Number six, Minecraft transportation is a tried and tested topic. But if you're not worried about the fastest way to travel, then why not opt for some more style? And for that, you can't do much better than a bicycle. Through armor stands and partially submerged banners, you can make a pretty convincing vehicle in your Minecraft world. Or convincing until you try to bike somewhere, because then, not so much. Number seven, hopper chains are an essential build in Minecraft. There's no doubt about that. But what they have in function, they lack in visual interest. That's probably why we hide these away from most of our our farms. There just isn't much going on. But to spice that up, add some banners underneath like so, and now you've got a subtle hopper pumping animation. It's worth adding to your next item sorter, that's for sure. Number eight, whether through command blocks or mods, some pros in the community have made functional mirrors in game. But the rest of us might want something a bit more possible in survival. And in that case, we can make a fairly convincing glass effect utilizing banners as such. I mean, I wouldn't use these to check your hair, but that's what the F5 key's for. And while a waving mirror might be weird, it looks a lot better than just some glass blocks. Number nine, somewhere in Mojang Studios, they decided it made sense for only Bedrock users to have potion-filled cauldrons. And while I can't figure out why this hasn't been ported to Java, I can say it opens up some cool possibilities on the other end. For example, why wash your banner like this, when you can instead make a cool illusion of washing it like so? And I'm sure the leather workers at your village will love this little detail. Number 10. Having a Minecraft wallpaper is not a new concept. I'm even sure some of you have them. But putting a wallpaper in Minecraft? That's next level. And no folks, this isn't using some mod like computer craft, but rather by using the bottom half of a pattern banner, we can sell the look of a computer right on your wooden desk. You can even angle it, which I think is all the better. Number 11, clearly banners can make for some fun designs, but at a certain point, you're limited by the canvas. Well, in that scenario, how about we ditch the one banner and instead supersize our operation? With this, we not only get more room for details, but also quite the spectacle for any visitors coming by your base. Is it time consuming? Yeah, there's no doubt about that. But when the result looks this cool, it might be worth it. Number 12. It's hard to say anything in Minecraft really looks comfy. I mean, with so many straight lines and hard edges, even the beds look uninviting. And while there's only so much we can do to fix that, maybe we can start by adding a few of these pillows to your local lounge. And while these might not exactly be the throw pillows we see in our day to day, at least they're still made of wool. Number 13, little details can go a long way to beefing up your build. So while your friend might just stop building a nice looking base, you went the extra step with this. As you can see, invisible item frames are the solution. Throw a couple banners into place and it can add a fun detail to any mailbox that you place outside your house. It's not exactly a letter from Hogwarts, but the thought still counts. Number 14, with so many people doing 100 day challenges, it's gotta get tough to keep track of the days. So to help with 
that, or at least look like you're helping with that, why don't we check our calendar over here? Sure, it's a far cry from functional, but to beat that, you could tuck a day counter system like such underneath and bam. But even without that, it sure does look nice. Number 15. Now with all the banners that we've been making, clearly there's been plenty of trips to the loom. And while sure, it is a helpful block, when you're not using it, it doesn't look the most interesting. So how about we spruce up our banner making machine with, you guessed it, banners. Overlap the hitboxes like such, and you'll definitely add some style points for the next time you visit your world famous loom room. Number 16. When it comes to decorating your walls, Minecraft has options, but they're limited. Don't get me wrong, paintings and map walls look great, but they also tend to take up a chunk of space. So for a smaller footprint without sacrificing detail, why not mix your banners and item frames to make a fully functional mob poster, which I think gives you possibly the best way to label any of your mob farms going forward. Number 17. It can be a tough balance making your build look both run down and well made. So instead of giving off the destruction vibe with TNT, let's look elsewhere for our added details. And in this case, say we've got ourselves a pirate ship, but just wool alone isn't selling it on the sails. Well, stuff that very wool in a crafting table to make some banners, and the tattered look will be a lot more convincing going forward. Number 18. I'm gonna guess Steve and Alex aren't into high fashion. I mean, most of the time that you see them, they're wearing the same clothes, but maybe that's because they haven't had the options yet. So to open them up to the world of couture, why not get to making a closet? Throw some banner designs on an end rod pole like such, and this wardrobe quickly becomes something worth building in your next house. Number 19. With the 1.17 update, item frames got a big change in the form of glow ink sacks. And while those help a lot, maybe you're looking for another color instead of illumination on your tools. Well, we might have the upgrade you need. See, if we mix banners and posed armor stands together in creative mode, we can make functional frames. So if your pickaxe deserves more color, maybe it's time to roll out the red carpet. Number 20. Minecraft's lighting engine is pretretty simple. Which which is nice when you're spawn proofing, but is it realistic? Not exactly. And while I doubt that that's changing in vanilla anytime soon, we can at least pretend that that's the case like this. With cleverly placed and dyed banner patterns, it's clearly possible to make realistic lighting effects for your wall lamps. So until we get ray tracing in Java, this might be your best bet. Number 21. Now, a cool feature of banners is that if you right click one with a map, you're able to make a waypoint. But taking that one further, what if we didn't just make one of these, but a hundred of them? That way we could form different routes along a map wall. So if you're wanting to color code paths along your world, this is a great way to do that. Number 22. Let's face it, chest organization isn't a fun business. Not only do you have to sort out all the items, but then the item frames for labeling can be quite expensive as well. It's a hassle I'm sure we're all hoping to avoid. And to do that, might have suggest color coding instead. With banners, we can denote the chest or barrel like so, and all without wasting the item to put it inside the frame. Number 23. If you're looking for it, there are plenty of great features in Minecraft's various furniture mods, but that doesn't help us on the vanilla side. Though, why don't we tackle that issue one point at a time, starting with the printer for Mr. Crayfish's furniture mod. With a banner and a slab, we can make a fairly decent printer loaded up with paper. And while it lacks the functionality, it's a step in the right direction. Number 24. Banners open up a ton of options, but that doesn't excuse their setbacks. Let's face it, a 2x1 rectangle isn't always the size you're looking for. And while they might not fix that entirely, maybe armor stands are the next solution. As it turns out, by putting banners in either an armor stand's hand or head, you can keep the detail all while the item gets smaller. It's weird, but maybe it's useful too. Number 25. Redstone is great, but secret redstone is even better. So in that case, why settle for having a button out in the open when you could instead just tuck the thing behind a banner and keep it out of plain sight? That way, your secret entrance can have an equally secret input for extra security. And if it keeps those greedy people away from your stuff, I think this is definitely worthwhile. And with that, folks, dive that red sub button down below and have a good one. All right.